Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Kafaya and this is Do Space After School Coded. I'm very glad to have you guys with me here today. So we're going to start with a quick recap of what we did last week. And last week on Cano Code, we were introduced to lists and arrays in programming. And we started by watching the videos on what lists are which is basically the normal kind of shopping list that you'd have in real life. But now we applied programming concepts to them and learned how to separate the different kinds of lists that we had and figured out what to do with them. So we went on to make the Magic 8-Ball activity or challenge and we made our own animated street with a dog. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. So for today, we're wrapping up our exploration of the world of Cano Code, or for now, I don't know what the future holds. <laughs> so for today, to round it all up, and with something that I know everyone's pretty much very excited about, which is animation. If my entire life was just me being like an animated person and stuff that would be fun so today <laughs> we're going to start of course by watching an introductory video on how to create your own animation on cano code and then we would proceed to complete the quite fun challenges that there are we get to take our dog our imaginary dog on a walk and after that, we get to also create like dizzy emojis, which looks like fun. And I'm very excited to see what they're about. OK, so without further ado, I'm going to go dive right in to my Kano account. And as you can see, let me take us back so you know how to find today's challenge. So if you go into your account and click on your challenges it should bring you to this page right here and if you scroll down scroll through you see a lot of the challenges that we've gone through from variables to loops and events and logic and many many more and if you scroll all the way down right on the lists and arrays you see that we have animation right here and this is what we would be working with today so let's get started, just so we can get through all the challenges before we run out of time today. So I'm going to start by, of course, playing the videos. Please bear with me, pay attention. I promise this would be a lot of fun. Okay, let me turn up the sound for you guys so you can also hear. So because this is an animation tutorial, we're going to be adding a loop so we can move things. So let's grab an every one seconds block and let's change it to every one milliseconds. So right now we've got three crocodiles that are all stacked on top of each other and we can't see them. So let's grab some move two blocks so we can see them all. So let's grab the sticker one and I'm going to put that at 400 and I'm going to put it at 100. And let's move the sticker two as well. So let's grab the move two block and I'm going to put him back in the middle. And I want to move him a little bit up from the middle. So I'm going to put him at 280. And then for sticker three, let's move him as well. Let's put him back in the center. And let's try putting him at 450. Okay, so we've got this stack of crocodiles. So what I want to focus on showing you today is the lerp block. So let's open up the math tray and grab lerp. And I'm going to plug it into the X position of the first sticker. Okay, time to answer the question that is almost certainly on your mind. 
What is a lerp? And why does it have such a funny name? So this part isn't so important, but the word lerp is actually two words that have kind of been smushed together. The words linear interpolation. Now, I appreciate that doesn't really make this clearer either. The important thing is that linear interpolation, or lerping, is something we can use to change a number using a percentage. And the best way to explain what this means is to show you. So right now, there are three numbers in the lerp block. The first is the low number, and the second is the high number, and the third number is a percentage. Now this percentage chooses where in between these two numbers it should find the middle number. So this percentage chooses a number between 0 and 200. And because this is set to 50%, that's half, it's going to find the number halfway between 0 and 200. So this lerp is setting the x position of this first crocodile and 50% of 200 is 100. So basically, we've drawn our crocodile at 100 pixels across. So if I change this percentage to 100, it will be at 100% between 0 and 200. That means we're drawing at 200 pixels across. It's 100% of the way towards 200. If I put it at 0, it's 0% 0 of the way between 0 and 200. So it's going to draw at zero. So what happens if I change this zero to 100? Well, now it's 0% of the way between 100 and 200. So now it's at 100. So you can change the percentage to choose where in between these two numbers something is. Now, this is where lerps become quite useful. If we add a mouse part, Let's open up the mouse tray and grab the mouse x. And I'm going to plug that into our high number. And I'm going to change our percentage to 50%. So now our crocodile will always be at 50%. It'll be halfway between our mouse's x position and the number 100. So let's move my mouse across the canvas and see what happens my crocodile is always halfway between my mouse's position and the number 100. No matter where my mouse is, it's always halfway between those two things. So let's change this percentage so that it's maybe less than halfway. Let's change this to 10%. So now it's only ever 10% of the way towards my mouse. And let's move this again. So we get this very reluctantly moving crocodile. It doesn't move very far. It only ever stays between 10% of 100 and my mouse's X position. And I think I'm going to change this sticker so that it's a different image. So let's grab the image and pop this at the top. And I'm going to change this to a slow moving animal. Let's change this to a tortoise. So now we have this very slow moving tortoise that's very reluctant to move. And I'm going to stop him from moving into the wall because his minimum number is 100. So he's drawing very close to the edge. And I'm going to change this low number so his minimum is always at 400. There we go. So every one millisecond he moves from 400, 10% towards my mouse's x position. So let's try the same thing for the two other stickers. And I'm going to grab this lerp and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to press duplicate so I don't have to drag everything out of the trays again because I'm going to be doing the same thing for the x position. So let's put that in this sticker's x position as well. And I want this one to move a little bit faster. So let's change this to 30%. And now sticker 2 moves a little bit faster towards my mouse. So let's change sticker 2 to a different image. And I want a slightly faster animal here. I'm going to change it to a dog. 
and I'm going to repeat the same thing for sticker three. So let's duplicate this lerp and pop it in the X position. And I want a, quite a fast animal here. So I'm going to change this to 70. And let's change sticker three's image to something fast. I'm going to pick a tiger. So let's drag my mouse across the canvas and see what happens. So we have three very differently moving animals, but it all comes out of the same motion that I'm doing with my mouse. They're all moving different percentages towards my mouse every millisecond. Now, one of the great things about LERPs is you can use all sorts of different parts to control them. So I could use a microphone. So let's add the microphone part in and grab the microphone volume. And let's change the tiger. So now the tiger will move when I speak. And there you have it. That's how to use the lerp block. That was quite cool. And that makes me very excited to get onto the challenges. Without talking too much, we're just gonna go right back and get on with our challenges for today. So the first one is, as you can see right here, is the dog walk. So I'm just going to get on with that. Using lerping to make a dog follow your mouse or run to you when you click. Nice, so it's like a real dog, but an animation. Hi, just Jason. <laughs> hi, hi. So the first thing to do is to add a sticker part to make our dog and we are no strangers to how to add stickers. So now I'm going to go into my sticker tray and I'm going to choose the sticker image block and change that to a dog. Awesome. So the next thing to do is to set our variable. I'm doing very good, Jason. Thank you. How are you doing today? So the next thing we're doing is to set up our variables. So I'm going to go into my variable tray and set my item. But instead of my item, I'm going to set the walk speed of my dog to zero. But I'm going to change. go ahead and change that zero to one. Okay. Next, we're going to go back into our control tray and we're going to get our very good friend, the loop. So every one frame, we want our dog to move. So the next thing to do is to set the position, which we're going to use the lerping block for because that's what we're doing today. So now I'm back to my sticker tray and I'm going to choose the sticker X block. I'll go ahead and add a mouse part because our dog is going to be moving depending on what we do with our mouse. So now I'm going to get my mouse X block. Now, move your mouse left and right every frame. The dog would move from its X position to the mouse's X position by 50%. Try changing the percentage to a lower number to see what happens. Okay, so I'm starting with moving my mouse. And right now, as you can see, I move my mouse across the screen and you can see my dog move across the screen with me. So now I'm going to explore changing this to a lower percentage. Let's try 30 and let's see what happens. Same thing, right? Awesome. So I'll just put this back at 50 so that we can go on with the challenge. Now set the percentage it moves by using the variable you made earlier. So we're going to go back to the variable tray and set our item, which is the walk speed. I'm going to set that to a lerp using my wipe sticker this time so now you can see my dog is properly placed on my canvas now i'm going back into my mouse tray and i'm going to select the mouse y block awesome 
So back, we're back to our variable straight and we're going to set our walk speed to the mouse Y button also. So we're good. So change the image of your mouse cursor. I'm going to do that by opening the mouse tray and I'm going to choose hmm, to, I'll change my crocodile to my chicken leg is interesting. So now it looks like my dog is chasing my chicken. And every time that I, wherever I move my chicken leg to is where my dog comes to. So it looks like my dog is following the chicken leg. Nice. It's like a fun game of catch. Okay, that's cool. Now your dog walks slowly to your mouse, which is our chicken leg in this case. Make it run when you click it. So we're going to make our dog move faster. So to do that, I'm going to go back into my mouse tray and I'm going to select the mouse on click block. And now I'm going into my variable tray to set an item. This time my walk speed is going to be faster of course because we had one before and now we're going to change our walk speed to 10 so every time that i click on my um every time that i click on my mouse my dog moves a lot faster than what we had before so now i'm going to go ahead and add a text to speech part to call my dog over so to do that i'm going into the add parts button and i'm going to click to add that then now the next thing to do is to go into my text to speech tray and I'm going to choose this block right here and text to speech I'm going to <laughs> tell my dog well the next thing I'm going to do is to write the text that I want to say right so it's expected to tell my dog to s how do I call my dog by saying hair here, Fluffy. Very cute name. <sighs> okay. Okay. Next, we're going to make our dog stop running when we release the mouse click. So I'm going to open my mouse tray. So, and select the mouse on release block. And now we're going back to our variable tray to re repeat the same steps. My walk speed back to my variable tray. I'm going to set that to zero. So here we go. I am a bit nervous to try this out. So see, whenever I click, my dog moves super fast. It's just, I wonder if you guys can go a step further with this challenge and make your um, dog turn towards the chicken because now it just moves right but I want it to also turn when it does that that's a fun homework or activity that you guys can do later but yeah when I click, my dog runs towards me, and when I release, it stops, like it goes back to slow. But still following the direction of my mouse, this dog really likes chicken. <laughs> so I click and it moves fast, I release and it goes back to being slow. So let's try that again. So my dog is right here at the bottom of the screen because that's where my mouse is so my dog is following my mouse so now i'm going to go right here and click and you can see my dog runs straight towards me every time when i click my dog moves faster cool that was fun let's see what the next challenge is so our next challenge is the dizzy emoji nice we've done a lot of work with emojis on this app so use lerps to make an emoji really dizzy. So let's get into that. 
set the color of the canvas we're going to go into our draw tray to do that and i'm going to set my background color to blue i like blue okay next next we're going to add a loop to our code and to do that we're going to open a control tray and grab our very good friend the loop and we're going to change this from seconds to milliseconds next we're going to add a clear a clear drawing block so our animation doesn't draw itself over and over again so now i'm going to go into my draw tray and i'm going to choose the clear drawing block the next thing to do is to set a fill color for our emoji so we're going to go back into our draw tray and the first thing to do is to select the fill color before we choose the color and of course i want my emoji to be some kind of yellow next we're going to change the second color to green so our emoji goes from yellow to green let me make this a darker yellow okay and we're going to make the color percentage change using an osc part so i'm going to go into go to my add parts and select the osc block and inside my osc tray i'm going to choose a speed and now we get to move to where we're going to draw our emoji so to do that i'm going to start by going into my draw tray to select my x and y position and now i'm going into my math tray to grab my lerp block and i want it to lerp from 200 to 600. nice so now I'm going to go back into my OSC tray and give it a value. And now my Y position is going to be 300. Now, the next thing to do is to draw out our face. And since it's an emoji, we're going to use our circle. So I'm going to draw a circle for the face. And to do that, I'm going to open my draw tray and draw a circle with the radius of 100. Oops. And as you can already see my my circle, it's not a face yet. My circle is already lurping across the screen. Almost feels like when you're on a roller coaster and you go from having fun to just almost puking. <laughs> okay. So next, um, the move to lerp means that your emoji moves from 200 pixels, as you can see right here, to 600 pixels on our canvas. And the oscillator controls how fast it moves. That's the OSC block, which is right here, the speed that we chose. And as you can see right here, you can see the waves. And that's, how, that's what decides how fast our face or emoji moves okay so the next thing to do is to add some eyes to our emoji to our circle to make it an emoji so i'm going to go into my draw tray and i'm going to choose the stamp block so my draw stamp block and i'm going to change it of course because <laughs> we don't have crocodiles on our faces we have eyes so i'm going to go give my smiley face my emoji pair of eyes so right here that looks good now we're going to add another um, lerp to make sure that our eyes rotate because if you're dizzy it feels like your eyes are turning right so to do that I'm going into my math tray to grab the lerp block and I'm going to make it lerp from negative 50 so it's moving from negative 50 to 50 that's good enough so next we're going to go into our OSC tray and set the value back into our OSC tray we're going to set the speed 
and okay so we're going we get to change this to different speeds to see what happens let's see let me change because right now it's at 50 let me try 80. oh let's try 20. <gasps> it's making it even move faster okay let's try 20. okay that's slow but not yeah, I like 20. Let's do 40. I mean, I'm even getting dizzy looking at the... Um, I'm even getting dizzy looking at the face, the emoji. So let's see next. The next thing to do is to make the speed easier to change by adding a slider part. To do that, we're going to go in here where it says add parts and we're going to add our slider parts and then we get to move choose a position for our sliders to be and we're going to change this the x position would be 400 and the y position we need to bring it down a little bit to 500 nice so when we change our slider we want it to move at the speed of slider value okay let me close this no and make this full screen so everyone can see what I'm doing so right now you can see oh no <laughs> so yellow is good right once I start to move my slider my f my emoji starts to move super fast until it turns green so yellow is pretty okay all is well we're having some fun and the further i go on the slider the faster it goes and the greener my emoji gets until this is a total puke fest okay and let's do that again nice Okay, now before we run out of time for the day, let's get on to our final challenge, our next challenge for tonight. And this is called a parallax scene. So for this challenge, we're going to make a scene where you can move around with your mouse using the parallax effect. Parallax creates an illusion of depth, even though it's just a flat image. This should be fun. So now let's go ahead. Before we start, you are going to need to add a mouse part to move our creation around. So I've added my mouse part, and now I'm going to start by adding a loop. So every one millisecond, I want, okay, first of all, let's set our background color. To do that, I'm going into my draw tray and I'm going to set my background color to a random color. Oh, okay. So my background color is going to lerp. I want to change, I want it to move from the color purple to blue. So that kind of mimics morning and evening, right? Okay, let me choose a different blue. Okay. Next, we're going to go into our math tray and I'm going to select this block right here. And to control the color with our mouse, we're going to open the mouse tray and choose the mouse Y position divided by six. Okay, so if I move my mouse up and down the canvas, the, y, the mouse Y position goes from 0 to 600. So dividing it by 6 makes it go from 0 to 100, which is the maximum percentage you can lerp. So you see, I'm moving. Let me make that bigger so you can see. I'm moving my mouse across my screen, 
and when I come down, it's bright like the morning blue sky. And the further up I go, the later it goes until we get purple, like the night sky. Somehow. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, we've done that. Next, we're going to add a clear drawing block so that our animation doesn't just draw itself over and over again. So, oops. Right here, I've added my um, clear drawing block. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to add some scenery to our canvas right now. So I'm going to go into my draw tray and choose a fill color, first of all. And I'm going to choose green, like the grass. Next, I'm going to go back into my draw tray and I'm going to choose my position for where I'm going to draw. And I'm going to use this block right here and my mouse X and Y position divided by eight. We're doing a lot of math today. So we make the Y axis move two. To do that, we're going to open our math tray and do the same thing that we just did. From 500, back to our math tray, we're going to oopsie, use our square root block. Okay. We're going to add some more math. <laughs> and here we go. And now I'm going into my mouse tray to select my mouse Y button block, rather, excuse me, divided by eight, just like we had with our X one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is to draw our hill. I'm going to draw an eclipse with the width of 400 and a height of 150 okay the next thing to do is to put an animal on it to do that we're going to choose our position first and my x is going to be 100 and my y is going to be negative 150 and now inside of my draw tray, I'm going to draw, use the stamp block to choose an animal. I chose a sheep or a ram. What animal is that? Okay. And I'm going to change the size of my sheep to 50. Nice. So the next thing to do is to add a second hill that looks like it's closer to me or you. So I'm going to go into my draw tray and choose another fill color. This is going to be a brighter green than what we had up there. Let me see. Awesome. And now I'm going into my draw tray to choose where my um, another hill is going to go. And inside of my math tray, oops, sorry. I'm going to drag this equation block and change this to 400 and I'm going back to my math tray and choose this again and my mouse block for my mouse X divide that by 4 and now for my Y position I'm going to go in and do the same thing change this to 650 and using the square root block right here I'm going to change this to negative back to my math block I'm going to choose the same block and now my mouse Y block divide that by 10 Okay, so we're going to draw the second hill by opening our draw tray and we're going to draw an eclipse with the height of 600 and a height of 200. Nice. 
So I'm going back into my draw tray to draw to get another animal. So we have to choose our position first. I'm going to change X to 0 and Y to negative 250. And inside of my draw tray, I'm going to select my stamp block and I'm going to pick my cow and change my cow's size to 215. Nice. Back to my draw tray, I'm going to draw change 0 to 600 and inside of my math tray again we're going to do some more math and my mouse x block change this to divide and change 0 to 10 back to my math tray to take care of my Y position, we're going to change this to 50. Back inside of our math tray, we're going to choose this block that says square root and we're going to change that to negative. Drag this block one more time, grab our mouse Y button, a uh, block, I keep saying button, and divide that by five. Okay. So the last thing we're doing is to add our UFO using our stand block. So I'm going to use this to choose my UFO right there and change the size to 40. So our parallax scene is complete. So when we move our mouse around to have a good look around our scene, things that are close to you move more and the ones far away move less. Look around, which makes it look like 3D. So let's see. Okay. Okay, that's kind of cool. Awesome, and that's what we have with our UFOs. Yeah, that's it. If you want to take a look at the code, this was kind of, it was a lot of code, but what we got was, looks very cool. And next. And that brings us to the end of today's challenge. I'll let you guys stare at this for a bit longer if you want to. But yeah. This is quite this is kind of fun. Okay. That's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, please send us an email at hello at dospace.org. My name is Kafaya and it's been fun having you guys with me here today. I hope that you learned something or had fun watching me do the challenges at least. Okay. Thank you and have a good day. I'll hang around for sure for like two more minutes if you guys have any questions. But if not, you are free to go.